So I already know that you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing billionaires tell you that you can't have things like healthcare or education. But regardless, um, we're going to hear from Mark Cuban, who is another billionaire who is going to tell you that, you know, you can't have the nice things that people in his class have. Take a look. Mark Cuban is here. He has been a capitalist his whole life, and he actually started with nothing yeah. and became a billionaire because of hard work and just smarts. And luck. And, and luck. luck. It, there's always luck, of yep. course. So tell me about that. What do you think about how 2020 is shaping up and, and capitalism versus socialism? Well, I, I mean, capitalism is going to win. There's, there's no question about that. But I, look, I'm never against open discourse. That's what makes this country great, you know? Um, people being able to convey their opinions. Now, I'm not going to agree with all of them. Um, socialism just doesn't work. Um, Medicare for all, I, I believe health care is a right, but you're not going to all of a sudden create an environment. Well, let's just talk about her plan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you had a you, Twitter battle. With yeah, and not even with her, right? I think she just let me go, but... Um, <laughs> You know, if you look at her plan, there's just things that just have no chance of passing, you know, um, and things that just don't make sense. Like, so part of her plan says employers will take the money that we were paying for insurance and put that into the med payment for Medicare for all for their employees. Now, she had the choice of saying, let's increase payroll taxes by a certain amount, which would have been the more viable way. But we, what she chose was something called a head tax, which says for my companies, any company that has more than 50 employees, rather than paying a higher payroll tax, we're going to charge you the average of the last three years plus an inflator um, each year for each one of your employees. Now, that means that in her mind that we'll be paying $7,500 to pick a number per per year per employee. Now, for somebody who's making $200,000 a year, okay, that's not bad. But what's the impact on someone who's making $10 an hour or $12 an hour or $30,000 a year? Right. If you know if you you have to hire somebody and the, the payroll cost is instead of 6.12% um, or whatever it is, right, you're having to pay $7,500 per year, you're going to have second you're thoughts. Slow hiring. Right, you're going to have yeah. second thoughts about sure. hiring that person. Even worse, as you evolve into her plan, you're going to see companies cut payroll benefits because they know if they push their costs down leading into the plan for the calculations, it's going to cost them less per, per employee, and that's going to create additional problems. Right. It's just you, not you thought out. They're going to hate it because uh, their Cadillac plans go up. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, look, for the Dallas Mavericks, it cost me for a family of four, my, we self insure, and my insurance costs are $29,900 per year. But I'm okay with that because our insurance is great and it's a great premium for an employee's. Under Medicare for All, they're going to take a huge step back in what they get. And like to your point with unions for their Cadillac plans, you're going to have a lot of people that are very upset that Medicare for All doesn't provide the quality of care that they're used to. And that's going to create huge transitional problems. Okay, so I will admit that that clip didn't bother me as much as the clips with, you know, Bill Gates and Leon Cooperman. With that being said, whenever I hear a billionaire talk about politics, it just, it frustrates me because I don't care about billionaires and elites like if you want to know how we should construct public policy we shouldn't be talking to rich people who don't need government to sustain themselves we should be talking to normal people who the government is supposed to serve who actually pay taxes mind you and who should have the largest say in the direction of the country but nonetheless you know in mainstream media rather than actually focusing in on what normal people want we see them bring on billionaires like Mark Cuban to pontificate about things that won't affect them and that they usually don't know anything about. So he says, capitalism is going to win. There's no question about it. But the thing about capitalism potentially winning out over socialism is that capitalism is a virus that will one day grow so big that it will consume itself and inevitably devour the entire political system which it exists in and bring down the planet with it. So, for the sake of humanity, we better hope that capitalism doesn't win. Because capitalism is going to kill us all if it does in fact win. Now, I know that for people like Mark Cuban, of course you don't want to undo capitalism because this is the system that made you a billionaire. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to undo socialism if that system helped me. So, I get it. It's self-interest, right? But for the sake of humanity's survival, we better hope that capitalism does not win. And, you know, I think that he's wrong in actuality because when you look at public opinion polls, 7 out of 10 millennials favor socialism and they would vote to elect a socialist. So the future generation, they know that capitalism is a failure. Capitalism is a deadly system. It's just a matter of 
Will we be able to assume power in time before it kills us all? That's really the true question. It's a race against time. Um, he also says, I'm never against open discourse. That's what makes this company, country, great. Now, I love that Freudian slip there because that's the same exact thing that Donnie Deutsch said when he was talking about how, you know, Bernie Sanders is not what is good for this company, country, excuse me. Right, because when you elect someone like Bernie Sanders, you know that that's going to be bad for the bottom line because he's going to make you pay your fair share. He just put out a brilliant tweet about Netflix. He said that $8.99 fee that you pay to Netflix monthly is more than they've paid in taxes all year. So what Bernie Sanders is going to do is make all of these tax dodgers finally pay what they haven't been paying. So, you know, that's really important, but that's what people who are elites don't like because they've been able to hire enough lawyers to where they don't have to pay any taxes. They can get away with paying zero dollars. Amazon paid zero dollars in taxes after they made billions in profits. This is a trillion dollar company. So the fact that they are paying effectively zero dollars in taxes should outrage everyone. So what Bernie Sanders is doing is he's going to change that. And they know they don't like that. Now, Mark Cuban says socialism just doesn't work. Okay, that's not a very persuasive argument. And um, furthermore, it depends on what type of socialism we're talking about. Progressives in the U.S. oftentimes point to social democratic countries in Scandinavia. Those are working really well. Um, when it comes to Latin American countries, oftentimes when they elect a socialist government, we overthrow that government with the CIA. So we haven't even really tested democratic socialism anywhere in the world. What we're really talking about is democratizing the workplace. We're talking about democratizing society. We're talking about hyper-democratization. So it's not necessarily so much about big government so much as it is about empowering people, right? So, I mean, socialism, to say that it doesn't work, that doesn't really mean anything. It has no value in saying it. So he then moved on to Medicare for All to demonstrate why socialism won't work. And he proclaims healthcare to be a right, but then proceeds to argue against Medicare for All and why we can't have healthcare be a right in actuality. Now, when they refer to her Medicare for All bill, meaning Elizabeth Warren, meaning Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, since he's the only candidate who actually supports Medicare for All, the reason why he's against it is because he thinks it's not politically feasible. Now, he argues that the head tax isn't the best way to fund it. No, no disagreement from me there. However, to say that it's not politically feasible, that doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of things that we previously thought were not politically feasible, right? The New Deal was not politically feasible. The Voting Rights Act passing social security. These are all things that we thought were not politically feasible. Marriage equality, women securing the right to vote, freeing the slaves even. Our entire history is pretty radical, right? As Americans, we've been always pushing the envelope and we haven't really gotten any big structural reform or constitutional amendments in this generation. So now I think we're on the cusp of that. People are finally waking up and realizing that we need that change. So to say that it's not politically feasible, that doesn't really mean anything. And it's an ahistorical take because you're not taking into account the times that Americans have done things that were once thought to be politically infeasible. He also talks about um, how Medicare for all, according to him, will take a huge step back in terms of benefits. And he adds, quote, you're going to have a lot of people that are very upset that Medicare for All doesn't provide the quality of care that they're used to, meaning union members, and that's going to create huge transitional problems. So this is an outright lie. Medicare for All, for I think most Americans, will offer the best care that they have ever had. To get the level of and quality of care that Medicare for All will offer. Like, if you were to opt for a private plan that covers that much, you'd be paying like more than $1,000 per month for one person, I'd imagine. Because it covers everything. Dental, vision, hearing aids for seniors. It is comprehensive, universal, and it's free at the point of service. So the union members who enjoy the private insurance that they have currently, first of all, I can assure you that it's going to be better than almost every single plan that unions are offering that's based in, you know, the private market. And second of all, if it's expanded to everyone, isn't that better? I mean, I, like, I just don't understand how 
people can say healthcare is a right, but then say, I don't support Medicare for all. I still think that it should be a commodity like shoes and video games. Like that's contradictory. You cannot say healthcare is a human right, but then go on to say, I think we should deny this human right to people unless they can afford it because it's not politically feasible. Fuck off. Like Democrats say this too. They have co-opted the language that we use to talk about Medicare for all. Healthcare is a right. Even Tom Perez says it, the DNC chair. If you ask him what he thinks about Medicare for all, doesn't support it. All Democrats say healthcare is a right. Do they actually believe it's a right? No. Because something that is a right cannot be taken away from you. And the fact that they say it's a right, but believe that you have to have money to, you know, benefit from that right, it shows that they're full of shit, right? They're about paying lip service to the single payer movement, which isn't going away anytime soon, mind you. So, you know, they don't have a choice. Either they acquiesce or we're going to take them out and we're going to defeat them and we will get people in power who actually will push for Medicare for all. Now, later on during that interview, the portion of the clip that I didn't show you, he talked about the wealth tax and how he's not necessarily against the wealth tax per se. It just kind of matters how it's implemented. Now, he was incredibly condescending and it was such a short portion that I didn't think it was worth playing the clip. But basically, to summarize what he was saying, and I'll link to the full thing down below if you want to watch it, was that, you know, People who support the wealth tax overall, it seems like they're a little bit naive because they don't actually have billions of dollars, you know, in cash on hand. And, you know, the wealth tax, a plan like Elizabeth Warren's, doesn't actually take into account liquidity, given that, you know, the amount that he'd owe Mark Cuban himself, based on his wealth, actually exceeds the amount of cash he has on hand. So in order to, you know, fulfill what's required under Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax, he'd have to sell off portions of his worth in order to pay that wealth tax. And so the way that he talks about proponents of the wealth tax is that they're just naive and they don't really understand the wealth tax, right? They don't realize that people like him are going to have to literally sell off their wealth in order to comply with the wealth tax. But that's the whole point. The point is you have to sell off your wealth in order to pay the wealth tax until you lose so much wealth that the wealth tax no longer applies to you. That's the whole point. Because in a capitalist system, wealth equals power. We can't have people having a billion dollars in net worth because that destabilizes the system. So the fact that it doesn't take into account liquidity does not matter. Sell off your assets to pay for the wealth tax and eventually you will have your wealth reduced to the point where you won't have to worry about the wealth tax. That's the point. Billionaires shouldn't exist. Period. End of story. And to that, he also said that people like uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are becoming incredibly Trumpian by saying statements like that. Look, I am so sick and tired of hearing from billionaires. They all need to understand that at a time when there is wealth and income inequality, they need to read the room and shut the fuck up because they're, you know, talking down in a condescending way to peasants on national television every single day. It's not helping their cause. It's only making people want to eat the rich even more. They're getting more hungry. So, I mean, I'll leave that there. I'm not sure what else to say about this. Mark Cuban, like every other billionaire, um, is incredibly out of touch. And yes, we need to take the wealth that he stole from America. Because that much wealth, I mean, I don't know how much he's well, he's worth. He's over a billion, but um, no one person should have it. Sorry. Um, if you want to live in a society, you can't have that much wealth while people are starving. That's not the way that things should operate. And just because they are that way now doesn't mean that they should be that way. So kindly shut the fuck up about politics and the wealth tax. Go away, Mark Cuban.